This is a massive upgrade from my original LOU Mars. This is the Mars 5 Ultra, an exceptional and still pretty decent value resin 3D printer. For those that don't know, resin printers work with a liquid resin stored in a, a vat at the bottom and use a combination of UV LEDs and a liquid crystal display to selectively cure the resin to create your 3D print. The magic with resin printers is that the LEDs cure the entire layer at once. So even if you're printing a, a little rook or a huge handle, if they're the same height, the same layer, they'll take the same amount of time to print. That also means that you can print multiples of items and it will take the same time regardless of how many you want to print. Compared to FDM, that's filament based printers, that's quite the difference. The biggest catch with resin printers, generally anyway, is that the build volume is often freaking tiny. This one is an upgrade from my original Mars, but not by much. This prints a maximum of 153 millimeters by 78 millimeters by 165 millimeters, up from 120, 68, and 155 on the OG Mars. That's minuscule and means that a lot of models just won't fit. This amazing looking cosplay knife, for example, just will not fit. Even the handle on its own barely fits if you tilt the thing. So you definitely want to keep that in mind if you're in the market for resin printers. What you can fit in the build volume though is absolutely incredible for quality. The big selling point of this ultra version of the Mars 5 is the 9K LCD they use. That's 8520 by 4320 pixels. That is, at least compared to the paltry 4098 by 2560 panel that they use in the standard Mars 5. That means a minimum feature size of just 18 micrometers versus 35 micrometers on the standard Mars 5. That is frankly insane and means you get exceptional quality out of the prints, as you'll see shortly. The other big feature difference actually has to do with how the printer resets between layers. My original Mars and this, the regular Mars 5 resets layers by just lifting the print bed upwards, pulling the part away from the re release film at the bottom of the VADs, and then letting new resin flood in and bringing it back down. This Ultra has a unique party trick. It tilts the tank to more cleanly peel the film off of the part and to literally slosh new resin under the part as well. That means that it can print considerably faster, 150 millimeters per hour compared to just 70 on the regular Mars 5. That does mean that there is an extra moving part in this. One of the advantages of resin printers is that they generally only have one motor for the Z-axis, whereas this one has two, including the tank tilter. But I can't say that I'm concerned for the longevity here. The benefit of that 9K display becomes really clear when you look at the test prints. The default test print is a little rook, which as a side uh, sort of note, gives us a great demonstration of the interesting hexagonal pattern the build plate imparts on the bottom of your prints. Of course, if you end up using supports, this isn't a problem, but anything printed straight onto the bed will have a pretty cool and to the touch, you can feel it, you know, under your fingernail, but really not deep pattern. Anyway, the detail here is excellent and it printed remarkably quickly. The other test prints is actually from the uh, Cheeto box, the slicer software you want to use with this printer, which has a bunch of essentially benchmark designs, incredibly thin struts, weights on supports, a fine grid, the works. This thing didn't break a sweat. The uh, 0.25 millimeter pole shows just how insane this thing is. That is a quarter of a millimeter wide, and yet it printed it perfectly. I couldn't believe it when I saw that actually come out. Even the weights are, are all held on perfectly, uh, even despite the tiny little contact patch and the frankly massive size of some of the back ones here. The grid also looks amazing too, despite its incredibly thin thickness. Uh, the only minor imperfection I can see is the 0.2mm wall thickness square shaft has maybe a tiny bit of bowing on the walls. It's really slight and more of a statement to the design rather than the printer, but 
still. Of course, test prints only go so far to showing you what this thing can really do. We need a, a real print for that. And happily, I was asked to print the handles for those absolutely beautiful cosplay blades. And these turned out, frankly, amazing. And an uh, amazing benchmark as well for the quality of this printer. Uh, this has sort of a, a faux wooden texture uh, on top of a leather wrap as well. And the printer got it spot on. With a bit of paint, this thing will look ridiculously realistic. Something you definitely can't do with an FDM printer, at least uh, without a lot of, you know, sanding and hand sculpting. This thing looks incredible. One of the other extra features you get on the Ultra is this, the AI camera. There's absolutely no AI involved here at all, but hey, marketing buzzword, right? Anyway, via the Cheetah Box Manager software, you can use this both as a live view to remotely just watch the print happen in real time, or you can enable the time-lapse mode, which gives you a short video of the thing rising out of the resin uh, tank, kind of like magic. For a near 7-hour print, it gave me a 720p 30fps video that's 9 seconds long. Considering the camera is meant to be 1080p, that's a little disappointing, but the video definitely looks cool. There are actually a bunch of features that mostly operate from the Cheetah Box Manager software via Wi-Fi, of course, like being able to remotely upload print files and then start, pause, or stop prints remotely. You can see the progress, the release film and UV light lifespan, and access the built-in storage too. It's really pretty handy. I should note that there is a USB port included and a USB stick uh, for, you know, on the side of the printer for you to manually start your prints if you want, and you can use the touchscreen on the front for that, which I think is just Android, either way. Uh, and of course, you will still need to manually fill up the resin tank and take the prints off the self-leveling print bed too. Although the quick release of locking handle makes that pretty easy, and of course, the self-leveling bed's great too. The one thing I would note about the I.O. is that it's on the right-hand side of the printer, which does make it easier to access than at the back, like my original Mars, although it does mean that you can't have anything too close to this side of the printer, taking up more counter space. Not that big a deal though, especially since you kind of need space to put your hand on the side to lift the cover off, so there you go. One downside for me is that the printer doesn't have any of Elegoo's own fume filters built in. Resin stinks, and while the, the little sort of cheap charcoal filters that Elegoo themselves sell really do help, to need to charge them separately and then turn them on manually kinda sucks when Elegoo have previously had the filter built in. There is an expansion port on the back of the UV lid for compatible accessories, but I mean that doesn't seem to include a filter, and to have to buy it separately even if it did is annoying anyway. With that said, at least at the current £231 price tag on Elegoo's website, it's hard to argue that this isn't anything other than exceptional value. The regular Mars 5 is actually considerably cheaper at just £131, although the speed and quieter operation of this thing makes it great for anyone looking for an upgraded version. If you've already got a 3D printer, an FDM one maybe, and you're looking to get into resin printing, this definitely feels like a good option. I should make it clear that I'm no 3D printing expert, and I've only used Elegoo resin printers, so you should 100% you know, check for other reviews and more experienced reviewers for recommendations, as there's a very good chance that something from, say, any cubic might actually be a better choice for you. I can say that I've really enjoyed using this. It's a marked upgrade from my Mars One, uh, the usage experience is way better, and the remote control aspects are actually really useful for me. Being able to uh, upload and start a print from my PC, assuming there's nothing on the print uh, build plate anyway and there's enough resin in the tank, is actually really handy, and just to be able to monitor it, not just from like the status but a camera too, is amazing. I really like this thing. Of course, those are my thoughts, but I'd love to hear yours in the comments down below. What do you think of the Elegoo Mars 5 Ultra? Is this a printer for you? Would you rather something else? And if you have any more experience with especially resin printers and have any recommendations, please do leave those in the comments as well. I'd love to hear what you, you have to say. I will leave a link to this in the description, either to Amazon or to Elegoo's website directly. 
feel free to take a look and have it at your see. Um, if you want to see more videos kind of like this one, generally not 3D printer reviews, as I said, I don't tend to cover them that much, but more gaming hardware reviews, and including my own hardware as well, the open source tools, uh, hit the subscribe button, check out the bell notification icon, check out plenty of other videos in the end cards, and if you want to check out my own hardware, that's linked in the description as well. Otherwise, thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it, we'll see you on the next video.